Well, my name is uh, uh, Teresa Spence, Chief of Ottawa Biscuit, and uh, my spiritual name is uh, She Who Carries the Truth. Well, I grew up in uh, the railway. Uh, my stepdad used to work on the, on the tracks there. It's between uh, Morsini and Carcan. It's called Ottawa Car- Rapids. It's three miles away from there. So I was raised there, and uh, you know we had a we had a good life. It was peaceful, and um, we were never bored. Like you know, from sunrise to sunset, we were always occupied in doing chores and uh, doing things with the land, like going chopping and um, snaring rabbits. So it was a it was a life that I, I really uh, tra- uh, enjoy until I went to a resident school when I was six years old. I was. Um, all these uh, feel alone and not loved, and all these years I blame my mom for it, for it. But after learning about the history of the the resident school, what happened, and, and she was a resident survivor too, so I could. This is where I learned to understand why she was like the way she was not uh, affectionate to me. So um, you know, it was really. Uh, it was, you know. Most of us died with that pain, the resident school syndrome. And even for me, I feel like I'll, even though I'm going for counseling, the pain is still there. You know, it doesn't seem to want to go away, even though I have the tools to uh, work with it. But it's just the pain is there. It seems like you can't close a chapter mm. of that part of our life. Then when I just knowing that, you know, seeing this generation, they're still carrying that pain that we what we went through in a resident school, and um, you know, it's not a good life, and um, and our generation deserve a secure life and a life of freedom, not a life of pain and fear, what we went through our generation. So. Um, It's really hard to see our youth carrying the pain, what we've been carrying so many years. And, um, and as a woman, I feel that pain. Like, when you're a woman, when you have that pain, it goes all over your body and your heart. And it is, it's so much that you can't take no more. And uh, I don't know, it's just the pain that's really uh, too heavy. It's this honoring or the treaty, the purpose of the treaty, you know, the spirit of the treaty. And um, these these days, he doesn't even recognize our leaders as uh, leaders. You just see them as, as a person. But we can, uh, we First Nation, all, always respected him, and we always honored him as a prime minister, even the crown. And then and it is time for the both federal governments to treat treat us uh, equal, equal. You know, like to build up our, our community and infrastructure and let us be. Like, it is the leadership's responsibility to plan for their children's future. Not the prime minister, not even the crown. You know, like, we have our ways. We had our ways. We had our own laws. We had our own laws for the land. We had our lo- own laws for justice. We even have our own ways teaching our children. You know, we need to maintain our culture way to survive. So that was the purpose of that treaty, you know, to be partners. But the way it is right now, we feel like we're more like a slave to the, to the minister, not a partner. And, um, and I see my leaders doing their best, but, you know, it's the, it's the government, not just the prime minister, but the crown in both levels of government. They're all part of that treaty. It's time for, um, for everybody to work together, that means the government too, and, uh, and to uh, treat the, treat us with respect and honor. Even that treaty, that was the purpose of that treaty, is to go in peace and and honor each other and respect each other and um, fly together with uh, with the future, not to go separate ways. And this is what's been happening with the government. He's not listening or honoring our leadership. It's 
it's really um, unfortunate the way the government is uh, doing things to us, but uh, our youth, our grassroots, are making all the movement right now. You know, and, and it's good to see that there's they're giving a message to the government, enough is enough. We're not going to take it no more because it is our future. It's our responsibility, not his. And um, and this is why I'm doing this is for the ch for the children, not just First Nation children, but the Canadian citizens' children to walk together. And that's the future the way it's supposed to be. You know, the Creator put us here to to love each other, to care for each other, and to be in peace, not to dis disrespect and control other people's life. So. That treaty is going to be here as long as the land is here and we're here forever and it's important for um, to walk together, take our hands together and walk. <laughs>